Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about inspiration, leadership, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is one of the star players on the Kahuku football team who has won three consecutive state championships so far. He is Mana Carvalho, and today we are going beyond state championships. Hey, Mana, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Thank you, Coach Rusty. I mean, blessed to be interviewed here today with you. Trying to get to your record of 22 consecutive state championships. <laughs> Mana, you have been such an incredible player and person, um, not just on the Kahuku team, but in the Kahuku community and in our Hawaii community. And Mana, you play every play. I mean, you, in a football game, you're on offense, you're on defense, you're on special teams. Can you share with our viewers all of the different positions that you play? Mainly, I played safety this past year also wide receiver played a little bit of quarterback and running back also with the punter and the field goal holder yeah <laughs> and also adding the kick return and punt return you see mana i mean it's it's incredible what you do i mean literally you're on the field for every play and, and i love it because i'm always looking where's mana where's that number two <laughs> now mana i want to ask you about uh coach sterling uh he's your uncle yes and uh coach sterling has really built um a culture of excellence with his with the koku team for some years now and i want to ask you if you can describe um that culture of excellence that Coach Sterling is trying to instill with you and your teammates? The culture he's installing with us is more than just football. It's more life lessons, especially starting with when we come into practice, um, attendance. For me, being a leader, we get to position off and get our group and make sure everybody's here. And, I mean, if you're not here, then you make consequences for it. Even if it was excused, you still have to make up for your absence. And just having good coaches around us too, uh, culture is, I mean, beyond than just football. No, I like, I love hearing that. And, it, and tell me about the accountability, uh, how everyone has to be accountable for their action. Our accountability is, Basically, our team captains, we get position captains. They get to keep track of who's here and who's not in their position. And if you're not here and it was unexcused, then you'll kind of do more than what people would do if they're excused. But just knowing, like, if one of our players were missing one or two days and they come to game day and saying, oh, why am I not playing? There's an example, you weren't here for one or two days, so why would we trust you to go in and work with all these other people who is working every day? Yeah, and Mana, I want to ask you about the importance of fundamentals, because for me as a coach, I would always try to instill fundamentals with my team, because when the pressure is on, that's what holds up under pressure. You can tell when players or teams have weak fundamentals because when the pressure is on, they, they falter. What are your thoughts? I mean, fundamentals is everything. We have every day 10 to 15 minutes of EDDs, which is everyday drills, just making sure our techniques are good. And we'll have some break time where it's like special teams is out. Everyone will, whoever's not in special teams will go to their position groups and keep working their fundamentals. No, oh, I, I love it. That's what it's about. And that, that establishes consistency in performance. And 
Mana, I want to ask ask you about your dad, Coach Stewart. Coach <laughs> Stewart is the special teams coach. He's absolutely brilliant. He's an exceptional coach. And uh, and I want to ask you, what's the biggest thing that you've learned from your dad? The biggest thing I'll say I learned from my dad was especially not only being a football player, but who I am to people in the community and outside of the football pads and all the glorious stuff you happen on the field. It's what you are off the field than what you are on the field. Yeah. I, I love talking with your dad and coach Sterling. I mean, we get into some really good deep talks and, <laughs> and uh, Mana, uh, Ryan Tanaka donated both of my books to your entire team last year and this past year because this past year your team you guys had over half of the team were new players and yeah. ryan tanaka is like they all need the books um what are what are three things that really stood out to you in the books i mean the first one has to be accountability is everything because the culture we're built into this program is accountability like I said, with taking roll call, being accountable for what you do. And I think the second thing that stood out for me was the four Ps. The people you hang around, surround yourself with, who you call mentors, and then your your process. I mean, you can't cheat your process. Everyone doesn't like doing that one because it, it sometimes takes a long time. So that's that's one of the bigger ones and your purpose, why you're doing what you're doing. And then lastly, your performance, all the process you put in and the work you put in, how are you going to perform? The last one is make everyone matter. Because we have people on our team that aren't as good as the good guys. But on our team, we make everyone matter. We're in it as one team. And we have this thing all in or all out. So. It's either you're all in or in the waste. And if you're in the way, then it's kind of a problem to our team. But usually every year we have everyone's all in. Mana, I love hearing those three things that you brought out from the books. I mean, those are so important. It's so impactful. And I was able to come out last year to do a keynote speaking for, for your team. I came out this past year again to do a keynote speaking. Mm -hmm. I love, you know, your team. I mean, the questions, once I'm done with the speaking and doing a Q&A, I mean, the, the questions that you guys ask are so insightful. Um, how impactful was it for me to come out? I mean, you guys did the haka for me as well. <laughs> I mean, for us, every time it comes to Wednesday and it's a game week, everyone's excited because we have what we call coaches corner. We got to pick off our coach's brain or whoever the guest speaker is. We just got to pick off knowledge and get very impactful ideas or whatnot for our future, not only football, but our personal lives. And when you came in, everything was about superior excellence and that's one of the biggest things that stood out for me because being better than just good or great, just being superior is different compared to other people. Yeah, no, Mana, I love that you said that. And because, you know, for me, I like knowing the players. I mean, I've watched every game that you guys have played on TV. And I was at that the state championship game this past year. But I, I love knowing you know, you and the other players, just because, it, I mean, it's so, um, it's so much more meaningful when I'm able to really talk with you guys. And I, I kind of know you guys now. And do you, do you like conversing with me? Yes, of course. Totally. I mean, it's always great to hear from other people, other like sports, especially for me playing four sports last year, which was football, basketball, volleyball, and track. Just knowing ideas from outside of football and whatnot, and especially tennis, 22 consecutive state championships is crazy to me. So hearing from you is like totally a impactful thing for me. 
And Mana, last year, you remember when I brought out Super Bowl champion uh, Michael Bennett to talk mm -hmm. to have him talk to your team on a coach's corner. And what kind of impact did that have on you and your teammates? Just knowing that other people know of our team, especially like a Super Bowl champion who played with the Seahawks and the Legion of Boom, it's crazy. And it puts a good impact on, okay, we have things to do. We have work that needs to be done and people are watching. So what are we going to do to make people proud and excel over just not only the standard, but everyone else's standards, which are kind of crazy. <laughs> Yeah, no, Michael Bennett, um, he's the Legion of Boom. And, I mean, they really dominated on defense when they had won that Super Bowl. And um, I'm really close with Michael because I've been training him in private tennis lessons since he retired from the NFL. So over three years now. And, you know, for him, he has that mindset in anything that he does. He wants to be the best. And... I can see that in you. I mean, whether you're playing football, basketball, running track, tell me about the mindset that you have. For me, everything is considered competitive. Even if it's just like a little card game or we're in class and whoever gets, I just make everything competitive. For me, being a competitive person puts, puts out the best of me. I'll say, like, just being able to be competitive is different from people just wanting to be there. Yeah, and, and Mana, you know, for me, I feel like, um, you know, I I just hate losing. Um, winning <laughs> is okay. Like, you know, but it, when I lose, I'm like, ah, I just hate losing. And so I think I hate losing more than I like to win. Um, growing up, I had a Snoopy tennis poster, and the thought that he had was, it doesn't matter if you win or lose until you lose. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about that? For me, the biggest one was when we lost to Milani in the OIA championship. That was my first loss to an in-state team since my freshman year. Everyone who we played in this state was a win. So losing that game really impacted me to work even harder to beat them in the state championship. Yeah, let's talk more about that because Coach Rod York, I mean, he's a, such a great coach and he's been really doing such a great job building Mililani. And I, I think that the more great teams there are in Hawaii, the better, because it just makes everybody better when it's more competitive. Now, when you guys suffered that defeat in the OIA championship, what was the mindset like of your team keeping things in perspective that, okay, that's the OIA championship, but our goal is a state championship? I will say what got to us was after beating St. John Bosco, we're on a high ride and losing to Milani in the OIA championship was a good humbling experience. but like what happened when we played modern day lost and then came back that following week that's the mindset we had going into the state playoff just knowing we know what we're capable of and we only can control what we can do so we can just excel on what we do and mana i mean i want to ask you now okay we all know that you've won three consecutive state championships so far what do you feel are some of the reasons why your team has been successful for three years in a row now? I'll say just the mindset they have, especially coming with the cultural like cultural expectations from Coach Sterling, just not being able to brush it off and think, oh, that doesn't really matter. Everyone actually sees it of the cultural stuff and applies it to our football game and outside of football so having just not only one mindset of just football we have another mindset of outside of football and being close together and having a good team chemistry 
And Mana, what, what, are, what are some of the toughest parts of having your uncle being the head coach and then your dad being the special teams coach? I mean, what are some of the toughest parts that you deal with? For me, it's just every day, 24 hours. Some of our players, they don't have dads or uncles that are coaching on the coaching staff. But for me, I have a dad and an uncle. So even when I get home, Coach Sterling comes and stop by. And I just nonstop hear everything. Just making sure every little piece of my game is excelled. <laughs> yeah, that's that's so funny. You're like, it's 24-7. <laughs> you can't get away from them. I mean, but you know what I love about uh, Coach Sterling and Coach Stewart is they they are men of exceptional character. Um, and you can feel their positive energy and they they want to win the right way. And and I can see that they care about every player that is on the team. I mean, ev- like you said, <laughs> everyone matters. Yeah. And they feel that everyone matters. And and Mano, I want to ask you about the state championship game. I was there watching it in person. And from the very first play, the kickoff, your dad <laughs> calls on doing a, a, a onside kick and you guys recovered it. Tell me about that. For us, we knew when we go out there, we have to immediately impact the game. So I don't think they seen it coming. So we just ended up onsiding the kick, and the result was great for us. I mean, especially leading to a touchdown drive and putting a big, like, shocking moment on Minlani in the very beginning of the game. Well, Mana, I don't think anybody expected that. I mean, I, I don't know of any other football game where they started off the game with an onside kick. Um, that was incredible, but it it showed just, you know, behind the scenes, just really studying some of these tapes and and then trying to put you guys in a, a position to succeed. And Mana, you in the first quarter, you got uh, injured through a targeting um, from one of the defensive guys you you caught the ball you're running boom i mean helmet to helmet um tell me about that play and what was your thoughts afterward i mean during that play it's just a football hit you know you can't really do anything about it it's just football so i'm not really mad about it but at the end of the day it's just football and after i went out and knew i couldn't come back and play I had a mentality of just being there for my teammates. If I can't be there on the field for them, I'll be there supporting them and helping them however I could. And Mano, when the you know the TV cameras were going on the sidelines during the game, I saw you getting water for your teammates. I saw you encouraging them. I mean, I saw you doing all these things that a great team player does. And I mean, that, that's such a great example. Everybody knows that you're one of the star players, but to see you helping your team in that situation where the next man comes up and then you're doing whatever you can to encourage them. I mean, tell me more about that responsibility being a role model for your teammate. It's just going back to what my dad taught me, just being a better person, a bigger person off the field. I did as much as I could on the field that game, but when it actually needed to happen, I was there to support my teammates. Like, if they needed water, I was there right away, giving them water. And then Malai, he had he had a towel and he had sweaty arms, so every time he comes off the field or comes to the sideline, I was already ready to wipe his arms so he couldn't fumble the ball. <laughs> I noticed that too. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> now, Mana, that game was probably one of the best state championship football games I've ever seen. And I mean, just, I mean, towards the ending, when Diesel Kamoku gets that, is returning that, that kick and goes all the way down 
scores a touchdown. What were you thinking and feeling at that moment? I already had a feeling once he broke through that first wave of Milani players, he was going to take it and score. Because we all know as a team, if one player goes down, next man up. So I got a chance to live with Diesel. He lives here with me. So being able to talk with him every day, he already knows what he has to do. And I was telling him, like, theoretically, if I get hurt, you know you have to take my role, right, in the returning game. And we'll just laugh about it. But during that play, I already knew he knew what he was supposed to do. And he looked confident in himself, which was exactly what we needed. And Mana, I mean, when the cameras went on you, I mean, it, you look, I mean, just as happy as Diesel. I mean, you were so happy for him. And and that that just shows a lot about your character. And and Mana, I want to ask you, you mentioned briefly about Malai Fanoti, um, you guys running back. I mean, I love Malai Fanoti. I always say he's like a truck. I mean, it takes like three guys to bring him down. Tell me why Malai makes such a great impact on the field and off the field. For our team, he's just like another great leader. He motivates teammates, even every like everyone. He motivates everyone to be a better player. And not just only a player, just a better person. And the work ethic he has is crazy. I mean, you could just see it in his body, his arms. <laughs> I mean, everyone likes to tease us, like, we're the biggest people and whatnot. So that's how we got, like, really close, just being, like, the bigger, bigger arm people, which is kind of funny. But just the amount he does, not only for our team, but around the community, helping with football leagues. And it's just something we are used to doing as local football players. Yeah, I know that's... That's so great. I, I know that he helps little kids on on their teams, and and that's that's so incredible of him. And I want to ask you about how special and how important teamwork is. And I mean, everybody knows. I mean, football, you need teamwork. And I mean, you got to be in sync on offense. You got to be in sync on defense. You got to be rising to the occasion on special teams. And you're doing it all with your brothers. And I feel, I can feel that when I'm with you guys, with your team, I can feel that it's not just a team. It's like a brotherhood that you guys have, right? Yes, most definitely. I know some teams around the state, they're just very close during football times. But for us, off the field, that's where it really makes the impact. Just being able to hang out with each other regularly and not really forcing ourselves to go and hang out with our teammates more just oh that's my that's my brother of course we're gonna go hang out just anything we do is usually together as a team no that's that's so great i mean that's that's what it's about and that's why you guys can perform on the field because you're gonna give it that 100 percent because you know your brother's gonna give it 100 percent and regardless of if we're winning, losing, or tied. I mean, I want I want everyone that I coach to be relentless competitors from the first point or from the first play to the last play. And and that's what you guys do. And and that's again part of your culture. And Mana, I want to ask you, when you reflect back on your life so far, what's a big adversity that you have faced? Mine would probably be my freshman year. I broke my collarbone very first game. And I was I was really like sad about it, especially knowing I can't play my freshman year. And the expe expectations I had going into that season, being the freshman on varsity, and especially having my dad and uncle as a coach. But it was it was a good teaching moment for me too, because my size and knowledge to the game wasn't really all there. So just learning from our team captains, picking knowledge from players like Leonga Lefau, Leonard Ayu, uh, Brock Fanoi Moana, and my brother, it was really impactful for me to learn from them 
to excel the next year. And you know what? Setbacks are always opportunities for comebacks. And man, I mean, did you come back strong <laughs> right there? And and Mana, what would you say is a valuable lesson that you've learned in life so far? I mean, the biggest one is becoming a leader, not only for our team, but I'm also a student body of government for my class. So just getting to know people and knowing I have authority to like help people get better and getting closer to each other. So that's one of my biggest things, trying to get everyone to be good friends to each other and not causing conflict with hating each other. Oh, I love hearing that too. And Mana, what would you say is the best advice that you've ever received? I mean, the best advice I've ever received was probably from my dad or uncle. Every time they come out, like come and help me with my football game, is just they always put it in perspective of football, and then it goes on to bigger things and better things, such as like being a better person in life, being there for your teammates. Not when I want people to like hurry up and get in, not usually yelling at them, but kind of motivating them to get in and doing like better things without raising my voice and yelling, just being more motivating. And Mana, how how important is Raider Nation? I mean, when you have your whole community there, the fans, I mean, they they're known as Raider Nation. How how much of an extra boost does that give you on the field? Just the cheering and stuff helps a lot. Uh, especially when we played St. John Bosco, it was super loud coming from our crowd, and it it got us going. It got us motivated to know why we're playing this game and why it's so impactful to not only us but our community. Because everyone on the in our community, it feels like they're playing for Coca football. Just how much they love the sport and love the the Coca football name. And Mana, one, I want to ask you one more question before we wrap up. Uh, out of all the NFL professional players, who's a professional NFL player that you admire and why? Ooh, this one's kind of hard because I don't really idolize professional players, but I usually idolize more players coming out of Kofu, which is kind of something all little kids from our community does. Yeah. But I'll say Alohi Gilman. He came out of Kofu, so and he is in the NFL now. So just watching him be undersized and making all these plays in the NFL is crazy. And it's just knowing what kind of football we bring from Hawaii. Well, Mana, I'm I'm excited to see what's going to happen for your senior year. Um, best of luck to you. I'm sure I'm going to be out in Kahuku speaking to your team this coming season. Um, and I really want to thank you for taking time to share insights on the show today. Yes, of course. I mean, it's always a blessing to share knowledge of Kahuku football and not only Coco football, but me and my teammates and coaches. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Mana. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Mana and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.